Good morning. Welcome to this week's program of Study the Word. In just a few moments, we're going to be dealing with this week's Bible question, and we will provide a Bible answer. That question has to do with, does God speak to us directly today? You know, we've had similar questions to this asked in the past, but folks, not everybody has seen all the programs, and so there's going to be some overlap of some questions, but it's great because, you know, it's repetition is good for us, and so we hope that you'll stay tuned for the next half hour as we see what the Bible has to say about that. But at the end of our program, we're going to provide some free Bible study helps. Right now, you see that phone number. It's for you to participate. Do you have a question on your mind? You deserve a Bible answer. Give us a call. Leave it on voicemail, and we'll deal with it. Or you can text it. Like I mentioned just a moment ago, we'll put that number up at the end of the program and leave it up a little bit longer, and you can take advantage of some of our free Bible study helps. All right, so let's get into our study today. Now, here's really what we're dealing with. A lot of people find themselves hearing individuals saying that God spoke to them directly. Of course, a lot of people might think, well, it's not my place to tell them that what they're saying is not true. Well, I'm not here to encourage you to accuse anybody of anything. What I am here to do is to tell you exactly what the Word of God has to say about it. I'm not going to give you my opinion on the matter. That's not what this program is all about. People are out there wanting the straight goods. They want the truth. They want the Bible truth on these questions. And so, does God today speak to people directly? Now, what we're not talking about is, does God speak to us through the message? I mean, obviously, when a person is a student of the scriptures, they're going to feel conviction of when they're faced with a temptation and they'll say, you know, the Lord was basically telling me not to lie, not to steal. Well, in that sense, obviously God is speaking to us through his message and we will be reminded of it. and We'll think about the things that we have studied. But what we're dealing with is, is people saying, no, I heard the voice of God and God told me certain things. All right. So does the Bible support that? Okay. Well, what we need to understand is that when it comes to the message of God, which we stress a lot on this program, is that God has spoken to us. He's provided us his message. We quote 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 a lot, where it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It goes on to talk about in verse 16 and 17 that, you know, it's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction. For what purpose? That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so we find that we have the scriptures are sufficient to, to say when something's right or to say when somebody's doing something wrong. That's why we have the word of God. Now, over in Hebrews, the first chapter, we've gone to this passage to talk about are we living in these last days, which we dealt with a while back. But that's not what we're talking about today. I, I want us to notice something else. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it reads, God, who at various times and in different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. So God has spoken to us by his Son. And so this is why we have the inspired word, which is what Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, when he said that in verse 12, that he's speaking by revelation of Jesus Christ. Now remember, the promise that Jesus gave over there in John chapter 16 and verse 13, when he promised his apostles that when he went away, that he was going to send the Holy Spirit upon them to guide them into all truth. And that was fulfilled over there in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, where the Holy Spirit did come upon the apostles. Now, them be, being guided into all truth, this begs the question, how much truth is missing? 
we would say none. If all the truth has been given, then nothing is missing. Okay, so then why would God speak directly to people when he's already spoken? We have his word here. So when somebody says, well, Chuck, couldn't God talk directly to some people and give them a special message? Well, first of all, what message would God give that's different from here? He said, well, he wouldn't, because that would contradict what God said. That's true. But if a person says, well, Chuck, maybe God speaks to people about things that are in the Bible that they didn't know. Well, my question is, why would God do that when he's provided the message for us? We, what we need to remember about our God, and it's found in a number of places. I'll just read the one that's found over in Acts chapter 10. You can go to Romans chapter 2, and in verse 11, it repeats the same concept that I'm about to talk about right now, and that is Acts 10, verse 34 says the same thing in Romans chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, Peter opened his mouth and said, I truly perceive that God shows no partiality. God doesn't play favorites. It's interesting. I have been in a number of personal Bible studies with some folks who have been watching the TV program and, and wanted to have some face-to-face -face Bible studies, which we love to do. We set it up at times that fit into their schedule. And I'll mention that again at the end of the program. Anyways, it's been a number of times. I can't tell you how, how often I was in a class where the person we were talking with told me that a friend of theirs told them that God spoke to them. And they turned to their friend and said, well, why didn't God speak to me? And I kind of smiled and thought the same thing. And I said, good for you. You picked up on that. You know, people think that they hear things and, and, and come up with all kinds of reasons why that happens. This program is called Study the Word, the Word of God. And we're going to give you a Bible answer to that question. So the fact of the matter is God doesn't play favorites. And the message that we have been given, we're supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, which is Mark chapter 16 and in verse 15, which is kind of what we're doing on this program. We're trying to get the message out. We're trying to spread the good news so that people can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we, we get this message out, and I'm sitting here thinking, wait a second. If we're commanded to take this message and go teach it to people, why would I need to do that if God is going to talk to people and tell them what to do or give them a special message separate from this. It doesn't make any sense. It actually contradicts what we have been reading. See, God doesn't play favorites. So what we need to remember is that this message that has been preserved, which we talked about the scriptures earlier, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11 said, If any man speak, let him speak by the oracles of God. Now, if somebody says, well, Chuck, the message I heard from God, you can find it in the Bible. Okay, so then why would God speak to you separate from the word when he already gave you the message? Now, there's a lot of problems that will come from an individual that will say, God spoke to me. Now, here's a big one. Obviously, if somebody's claiming to be a follower of the Lord, then I would assume that the person who says God spoke to me is following the Lord, okay? So if they are following the Lord, they have a responsibility. And here it is, 1 Peter chapter 3, it says in verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. Paul also told Timothy to study to show himself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but to rightly divide the word of truth. So one of the big problems that a person is going to run into who says, you know, God spoke to me and I, and I heard a voice. 
and he told me to do this or he told me to do that. Here's the dilemma. How do you convince somebody of that? Let's just say that I'm telling you God spoke to me. He didn't, separate from the Bible. If I told you God spoke to me last night, how do I convince you of that? I can't show you a verse. What I'm trying to get you to do is just believe what I say. So what does that generate? I'll tell you what that generates. That generates you being a follower of man. That means you not questioning me. You're just going to have to believe it because I said so. See, that's the problem in the religious in the religious realm. And that's why we're doing this program. Because what this program is designed to do is to get people to find out what the Bible actually says. Challenge people because there are so many man-made doctrines out there. And that, folks, is nothing new. Jesus had to encounter it when he walked on the face of this earth. You just turn over there to Matthew chapter 15 and read 7, 8, and 9. I'll quickly go over there. These are some passages that you, we've used before in these programs, but you're going to hear a lot of that. You know, if you watch this program, let's just say for the next year, every week, there'll be a lot of repetition of certain passages because there's a pattern here. When people go beyond what is written, we want to bring them back and show them the error of their way because they're not staying with the scriptures. Matthew 15, he says in verse 7, Jesus is doing the talking and says, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Now, we are to abide in the doctrine of Christ, 2 John 9, but here it says, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. You see, if I can't prove to you, if I can't give you a Bible answer to a Bible question that we have been given, but I go ahead and answer it anyways, and if I expect you to believe what I'm saying without providing scriptural, biblical support, I'm just trying to encourage you to become a blind follower then. That's Matthew chapter 15 and verse 14. If the blind lead the blind, both fall in the ditch. And so when people are out there following people and believing people, just because they said so and they seem so sincere and they get moved by their story by saying, God told me to do this and I went ahead and did this. But nobody's asking questions like, how do you prove that? Can't prove that. They're just wanting, they're just going to expect you to believe it because they said it, and don't you question it. We are actually commanded to question. That's what our Lord wants us to do. Over there in 1 John, 1 John chapter 4. Now we're going to get back to some more specifics concerning, you know, does God speak to us separate and apart from the Word of God? Will will He give us that calling that's special, that's unique? Well, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, I mentioned a moment ago that we are encouraged to challenge. He says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So how are you going to test them? How would you test somebody? I mean, if, if you have two people who claim God spoke to them, neither one of them believed the same things as far as what the Bible has to say but they both claim that God talks to them. How are you going to test them? Well, you say, well, I'm going to have to use the word of God. That's the point to all of this. This is what the Lord wants us to use as our standard. We are to look into the perfect law of liberty, as James chapter 1 tells us. It's that word, and, and so much is, is expressed concerning this inspired word that we need to have confidence in. You need to have confidence in this, not confidence in me. My job is to direct you to this so you can have confidence in the word of God. But so many religious groups out there, religious leaders, trust me, follow me, believe what I say. Don't ask questions. You know, I mean, I wouldn't lie to you. God spoke to me and I heard this voice. They just expect you to believe this. Now, James chapter 1, he mentions in verse 21, 
Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Receive the word. What is that word? Verse 25. You know, he that looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful here, but a, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. We have the perfect law of liberty. We are to abide by these teachings. Like Jesus said, you can know the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth has been delivered. It has. That's Jude 3. We have the message in its completeness. So, having said that, we can understand clearly what Paul was upset about in Galatians chapter 1. Here he was with these brethren. He leaves. Short time later, he hears that these people have turned away from that gospel message that they had received so quickly. Look what he says here, Galatians 1 verse 6. Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So some people came in there and taught a different gospel, which is not another. It's either the gospel or it's not. You try to change it in any way, it's not the gospel of Christ. They have perverted it. So how did they pervert it? They started teaching things that were not substantiated by the gospel, and people were believing it, folks. People were believing it. And so Paul, he's not writing to these brethren by telling them, well, look, it looks like you have teachers who are telling you a lie. Well, if you believe what they say, that's okay. You know, because they're the false teacher. No, if you believe a lie, it's just as bad as telling a lie. We're talking about spiritual matters where you can prove it. There are times when people will tell you a lie, and you give them the benefit of the doubt, of course, because you, you can't prove it. Somebody says, you know, that they um, they ate something for breakfast, that maybe they lied about it for some reason. Well, you have no reason to question them about that. But here's my point. When it comes to the truth, the gospel, you can't change it in any way. And when somebody tells you that God spoke to them, they heard a voice, that doesn't harmonize with the scriptures. And for a lot of reasons that we've mentioned, God is not going to play favorites. And if he speaks to this person separate, then he's going to speak to you just the way it is. And people need to think that through. And they need to think about the idea that, well, how, how would you prove that? See, we read where we have to give an answer. We read that earlier. We have to give an answer for the hope that's within us. And so when somebody wants an answer for the hope that's within me, what kind of an answer am I going to give them? Give them an answer that's based on a feeling? Give them an answer that's based upon some religious experience? Give them an answer that's based upon what others have said about me? No, no. I might use those things and convince people, but that would be wrong. What I need to be doing is pointing them to the inspired word. See, this word is so powerful. Uh, the Hebrew writer described how powerful it was over in the fourth chapter. Hebrews chapter 4, he mentions in verse 12, For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This is what's powerful. This is why Paul said, Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. This can prick the hearts of people. Here's another really important thing for us to keep in mind. Back in Romans 10 that we like to quote, it's a powerful passage. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 said, So then faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This word of God can produce genuine faith. We know if something's right because we've read it here. That's where our confidence is. Our confidence is what God has said. That's what faith is. Now, if somebody tells me something that can't be backed up from scripture, but they're saying the Lord talked to them, well, then my faith 
is not from the word of God. My faith is from the word of man. I have to put my confidence in him. And this is why we have so many man followers or group followers today, rather than people who are just simply following Jesus and what he had to say. That's the key to all of this, folks. If you want to know why we do what we do every week with answering these different Bible questions, is to help people to realize that there are answers. And there are the correct answers. Now, people will give you answers to Bible questions. You could have some religious group deal with all the different questions that we've dealt with. And you could find people who will give you a non biblical answer to those questions. So your responsibility is to listen, to make sure that what you're listening to is indeed the Word of God. Because that's what's going to judge us in the last day. That's where we get our faith from. And that's what's going to lead us to heaven. Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 6? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets unto the Father except through me. So we're going to have to listen to him. Now we've gone full circle. What's one of the first passages we read today? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. God has spoken unto us in these last days by his Son. So we need to listen to what he has to say. Now, these New Testament passages, like, like when Paul wrote, by saying he's writing by revelation of Jesus Christ, this is inspired. I've, I've said this many times um, in, in other programs, that these books behind me, all these books that are behind me, not a one of them are inspired, the people that wrote them. Not, not a one of them were inspired. This is inspired, the Word of God. So, having said that, if a person says, okay, Chuck, are you trying to tell me that if somebody says God spoke to them the last, last night in a dream, or they heard a voice, then I am to say that they're not telling the truth? Well, I'm just telling you that this is how God speaks to us today. And they need to realize that if they're going to follow the Lord, they have to listen to what the Lord says that has been recorded. Because... God is not a respecter of person. You can read over there in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 that God is not willing that any should perish. This is why it, 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 it hurts me to hear people give these testimonies and how that people are quick to believe them. Remember a time where somebody was saying when I used to belong to another religious group, they were talking about this person who was driving down the road and they were drunk and then all of a sudden they saw a light and God spoke to them and they were saved at that moment. And they wanted me to believe that. But I'm sitting there thinking, okay, here's a person who was drunk and now isn't anymore and God saved them. But what about the person over here who was drunk and ran over an innocent child? How... What's going on here? Why didn't God talk to this person? Now, a person might come back and say, well, Chuck, it's not ours to question the mind of God. Look, that's just being inconsistent, and it's not handling the word of God properly. And that's what Peter talked about over in 2 Peter chapter 3, where people twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Folks, we want to arm you with knowledge that will set you free from error. We hope you'll be a continual viewer of this program. We have your questions every week. And we provide the Bible answers. But one of the big things that we try to encourage people to do is study the scriptures. Get their Bibles open. Read for themselves and see exactly what the Bible does say. And people are surprised. They're going, wow, I, I didn't realize the Bible said that. Where I attend, they, they said that that wasn't in the Bible. Or they're teaching things that we find out they're not in the Bible. Which is one of the reasons why people go ahead and request this pamphlet of 40 things people think or teach. They say it's in the Bible, but it's not in the Bible. And you can request that. That's free. But folks, this is a sixth lesson. This is num lesson number one. Six lesson home Bible study course. It encourages you to get your Bibles at home. It's four short pages. True and false. Fill in the blank. 
If you have a Bible, it's not going to be a problem. People run into problems doing this course when they answer the questions according to the way they've been taught rather than according to what the Bible says. But if you want to be a student of God's Word, hey, this is just the course for you. And there's no charge for any of this. I'll mail this to you tomorrow. You just call, leave your name and your address, voicemail or text it. And I'm going to send this to you along with a return envelope with a stamp on it. So when you finished answering it, pop it back in the envelope. When it comes back, check it over. We'll return it to you so you can hold on to it for future reference along with lesson number two. And then you do the same thing. When you finish lesson number two, you send that back until you finish all six. And when you finish those six lessons, you will have a better understanding of what God has to say than most people who have gone to church their whole life because they haven't rightly divided the word. And they're just simply believing what people will tell them. So, we have the correspondence course you can request, and you can say, Chuck, go ahead and pop that, that track in there, that pamphlet about the 40 things. We also have the 30. The 30 things are 30 things that are in the Bible that people in the pulpits across the land are saying, no, no, that's not in the Bible. But we provide the verses, and you go, wow, it really is in the Bible. Go ahead and request that also, and uh, there's no charge for those. Now, sometimes people say, Chuck, I just want a face-to-face -face Bible study. It's a lot faster. I got questions on my mind, um, or else I could join a Bible study that's going on. We have classes at the church building, small groups on a Monday, some are on a Tuesday. Uh, you want to set up a time that fits into your schedule, let us know. You want a face-to-face, -face, we can meet your home. Uh, we can meet at the church building. We can meet at a coffee shop, wherever. Do you want to have a face-to-face -face Bible study? Invite some friends, family members. Glad to do that. Your lady that wants to have a Bible study, fret not. I'll bring some other ladies with us and that we can join that so you'll feel at ease. So if that's of interest to you, let us know. And we also find that people are requesting to be put on the mailing list for our weekly bulletin, like a short sermon on paper. And if you would like to be put on the mailing list for our weekly bulletin, don't hesitate. We'll mail that out to you. Now, having said all of that, we want to encourage you to participate with this program because a question that's on your mind, chances are it's on the minds of other people. So feel free to send in, call it, text it, and we'll use it on this program. And tell your friends and your neighbors about this program. Now, what's cool is that people will visit us and uh, after seeing the TV program, just stopping by to say hi. Well, if we hope you'll do that. The Kirkwood Church of Christ meets at the corner of Big Ben and Guyer Road right there in Kirkwood, and we meet Sunday mornings at 9.30 for a Bible study. At 20 after 10, we have our worship service because we all come together then. For the Bible study period, even the kids have classes. So we have classes for all age groups, bring the whole family. And we meet Sunday afternoons at 5 and Wednesdays at 7 for a midweek Bible study. Come, you be our honored guest. Join us next week when we open up our Bibles together, folks, and we will study the word. Thank you and have yourselves a great day.